One, living in upstate New York during the winter is brutal. Two, I should probably be wearing gloves. And three, I really hope these shots turn out great because I'm suffering so much, so much for the art. Oh my God. Hey, I am Jonathan Belgard. I do photography and I am from Hudson Falls, New York. I would say about maybe two years ago is when I tried to turn it more into a real art form or a way to express my artistic kind of like energy and creative like being to get something out. I would say about two years ago, but before that I always took pictures. I always took in the form of selfies and stuff like that, but I also took pictures of like friends and just like things around me and anything that really struck me as just really beautiful or maybe even creepy or creepy beautiful, like stuff that just seemed really intriguing or something that just really kind of moved me to be like, I want to be able to capture this forever to look back on it for whatever reason. If I'm traveling or riding around with someone and I happen to have my actual camera or even my phone, um, it's a, a lot of times it's scenery um, and sometimes I'll take walks and stuff like that and get really inspired by um, the nature that's in the area and sometimes it gets kind of overlooked and people don't think about what we have around here. I mean, I even do it too, because um, sometimes I'll be honest, sometimes I'm just I'm less impressed, but that's because I think of just the general area. I don't think about what's around us. Sometimes I switch to find between using the viewfinder and actually using the actual eyepiece, because um, sometimes, depending on what I'm trying to look at, there's too much sun and I can't see the LCD screen, I use that because it makes it a lot easier. And sometimes they say you should use that more, um, but I really think it's just a matter of preference of what you're more comfortable doing. Um, and right now I'm just taking a picture of a tree, I'm just kind of like trying to find something to show you guys right now. Um, and try to get it, so... And sometimes, take multiples of shots. Because sometimes I can help, because sometimes light might shift just very little and might actually make a really great shot. And I'm also a big one for editing in Photoshop and Adobe Bridge and all that fun stuff. So a lot of times if you think you got a shot and you screwed it up because you got like, I don't know, someone's, you know, finger in the shot or, I don't know, something exploding in the background you didn't really want to happen. Uh, so you can just kind of edit that out and I like to do that because I find that a lot of fun too. I'm a real big advocate for the whole digital spectrum and like Instagram and like different blogging sites and you're being able to make your own website within five minutes. I find it really great that you're able to do that and like you're able to make it such a social thing to share pictures and it really, people who never thought about photography because they're just taking it with their phone, like it makes them think a little bit. It makes people want to be maybe a little bit more creative and I know people kind of bash it. It's just like, oh, people just, you know, take pictures of their lunch and their food and they're just me, me, me. And it's just like, yes, people do that and it's funny. And, but like people take photos of food for menus. So you look at it and know what you're ordering. And maybe, yes, maybe you don't want to know what someone's eating right that second but you can appreciate a good photo of a really awesome salad or a really amazing burger that you want to sink your teeth into. Like, so don't really knock it that hard. Um, and then also people can really branch out when it comes to like, if they are big into going out to nature and hiking and they take pictures of all this beautiful land that you might not be able to experience in your lifetime, but you get to look at it. It doesn't have to be like up in the mountains, hanging on the very edge of a cliff and you have this beautiful view. It can be, someone's backyard and you can find just the simple beauty in what they have around them that they might not, might not even notice. People inspire me too to take pictures. Um, I have not really blossomed yet how to do it in the sense of like photojournalism where I can catch people off guard, um, but I hope to get myself to that level at some point because there's nothing more great than catching someone in a moment that they're not really aware of themselves, if that makes any sense because you catch them as them because they're not, you know, putting up a pose or like trying to get their best angle and stuff like that. They're just being them and that's something really beautiful. Another photographer who is an inspiration of mine, uh, Cindy Sherman, and she originally started out a little bit after college. She did um, what was called movie stills and she took photographs of herself as characters and it looked like a still from a movie and it really intrigued you because you're just like okay so what happened before this and what's going to happen after moving images like with film and like video is just you can almost get like 
a real immersion of what the person is doing because with a photo you can capture a lot and tell a lot with a photo and that's what I really like but sometimes there might be just that little bit of depth that just not might be there that you can't like you can be struck by a photo but you feel like if it was just something one step further and then sometimes like filming can really bring that. I post a lot on my personal pages that I have um, which is a mix of just like me with friends taking just random snapshots and stuff that I actually go out and think out and shoot and get ideas for. Um, I'm working on a Facebook page for it. I'm just trying to get enough of the photos that I feel are great representations of what I do. And unfortunately with my um, thought process and everyone is their own worst critic, uh, I don't feel like I'm there just yet, but I think hopefully within the next like month and a half or two months, I think I might be ready to be like, hey, here's all my stuff. I hope you like it and you want me to take pictures of you or stuff and things. <laughs> Whoever is watching this and listening to me talk, thank you for one, sticking around this long, and two, um, if you ever feel inspired by like doing photography or drawing or painting, like even if you just do stick figures or you just take pictures of your cat or your dog, like don't let that stop you, like see what else you can do, like think about it, get like creative with it, let yourself explore your mind and like what you can do, and don't let someone's like opinion saying like these are weak these are awful stop you like yes maybe they're not gonna be hung up in a museum and they're not gonna get paid you know a quarter of a million dollars for someone to hang in their living room but what really boils down is that it's something that you made and that you love and that you can hang it up in your house and you can show it off to all your friends or just hang it in your room and show it off to yourself and be proud and just be happy that you as a human being are able to create something other than like, you know, another life. But technically your art can be another life. I mean, it can be your baby, depending on your whole thing. But it's something that is yours that you made and you can be proud of. And don't let people take that away from you. Okay? Be proud of the art that you make. Thanks for getting a little Oh jumping. my god, that's so beautiful. Jonathan Leibowitz. <laughs> <laughs> that's my real ugly cart right there. <laughs> I like I do the whole, uh, it's awful. <laughs>